Hey guys, Quiv the Lazy Geek here and today we're going to talk about one little piece of this uh, little imaging rig here which I think is probably the cutest imaging ring that has ever been made on this planet. Isn't, isn't this little thing so cute? Uh, but <laughs> besides the cuteness I want to, to focus on one of the elements you can see that USB cable where it goes to. It goes to a, an adapter that's called the Astro Mechanics EOS adapter and it's for connecting a Canon lens to an Astro camera. Okay, well, you know, you, I can already hear you well, ZW has such an adapter and they've even improved it recently to be the EOS adapter V2 because the V1 from ZW was pretty bad. I had it, I still have it somewhere. <sighs> There was a lot of tilt and a lot of looseness with the lens. Um, I want to make a little review of the adapter that I have here because the main difference with the ZW are similar adapters even with the optic is that it can actually control the lens aperture and uh, the lens focus mo motor using that USB connection and it has an ASCOM driver to do that. So that means that you can actually have a little tiny cute imaging uh, system like this one which has autofocus without needing any outside focusing mo motor or focusing belt that you would typically see with such lenses and to me that that opens up so many possibilities it's just you know uh, amazing to be able to do that and um, I'll give a bit more on my opinions on that little uh, adapter. Let's have a closer look first. So I am just going to basically take it, take off the lens. And this is something that's also great with this adapter is that I can just like, you know, remove the lens and, and plop in a new one. So um, the adapter, unlike the ZW uh, adapter, is very tight. So the lenses have almost no tilt when you put them on, which I think is great. So now we have taken off the lens. I am going to remove all of my little uh, USB cables here so that we have some, uh, some space to have fun with this, uh, this adapter. And let me show you how it looks like. I have uh, the adapter here and the adapter you can see inside there's the little ring of uh, metal metal contacts for connecting to the actual lens uh, contacts that we can see here at the bottom of the lens. So that's how this adapter will communicate with the lens to change the aperture of the lens, but also to move the focusing motor of uh, the lens. Uh, by the way, inside there's a filter, so you, you it's not within the adapter, it's uh, on a something outside of the adapter. I'm just going to unscrew the adapter so we can have a closer look at it. And here is the adapter. So uh, this adapter is basically the thinnest that it can possibly be for uh, connecting to an EOS Canon lens. And uh, I can measure it with um, one of those things. I don't know the name in English. And we can see that it's actually 16.9 or 17, roughly 17 millimeters of thickness. So it doesn't take up that much space in the focus, in the back focus. And Canon lenses, they require 44 millimeters of back focus, meaning that from the flange of the lens, so from um, the area here out on the on this circle to uh, the uh, actual sensor you want to have 44 millimeters and that lets you focus at infinity and gets you the best performance for the lens so this little thing it's very easy to uh you just like put on the lens and the lens fits really like a glove it's an extremely tight adapter it's very well built and the lens, once it's in, will have almost no tilt. And I can prove it by uh, connecting a Sigma lens, which is quite big. And I can just hold that lens by the adapter and, you know, without experiencing any, oh well, maybe there's likely some tilt, but very, very little tilt. So this is a very high quality 
type of uh, adapter. And yes, it does work with a Sigma lens that has an EOS mount, although sometimes it will actually uh, not connect properly. So it does uh, have some, uh, some issues with non-Canon lenses. Um, but, uh, but I have tested this adapter with uh, several lenses and I did not have really much of an issue. So uh, this adapter now, by the way, it comes with an additional adapter where you can put a two inch filter inside, um, so which can be very, uh, very useful. And it also comes originally with a specific USB cable, uh, which is this USB cable that has two USB ports at the end for the computer to give more power to the lens if necessary. Uh, the shape of the USB cable at the at the other end is that very old mini A, I think, shape. Um, but you know, there are still cables available. And for the lenses I have tested, which include the EOS 200 millimeters f2.8, the uh, Sigma 135 millimeters f1.8, the Canon 50 millimeters f1.8, and the Canon 300 millimeters f2.8, which is a huge lens, I never had to use the second plug. So what I did is simply uh, buy a simple cable like this and connect it via the USB hub on the camera. And that has never been an issue. And this is how it looks like. I really like this, uh, this, little, uh, this little adapter. It's very, uh, it's very cute. Okay. Let's talk about the software side of things to this little uh, adapter. First, I'm going to connect a Canon lens uh, to it. Of course, you need to make sure that the Canon lens, the uh, contacts are aligned with the contacts on, the, uh, on this adapter. This adapter, by the way, does not com come with any foot to connect to a dovetail or a tripod or anything like that. So that's something you would have to use like um, a circle or whatever, a, a ring around your lens or some other mechanism to actually mount uh, the whole imaging train onto uh, your, teles your mount. And I have a dual ring set up here to hold my lens on one side and my camera on the other. Um, let's connect to this adapter uh, via the PC. Okay, so now I'm connected to the PC and uh, the adapter, you can see I'm on the website of Astro Mechanics, the maker of this adapter, which is a Russian maker. Uh, this adapter I bought direct from them, uh, not via reseller, they actually sent it uh, from Russia. It's one of the first ones that were available. As soon as I realized this was available, I jumped on it. And I had actually a dual setup of two lenses, a 200 millimeters f2.8 lens, Eight lens that was connected to the to an ASI 183 mm Pro through some narrowband filters and I had my Canon 300 millimeters f2.8 lens that was going through an OPT triad ultra filter to a ASI 071 MC Pro camera that has a much wider uh, field of view, I mean, much wider sensors. So the field of views of both were almost equivalent. And so I could capture at the same time narrowband color data and uh, narrowband monochrome data and actually combine that in Pink's, in Pink's Insights. So I'm probably showing right now pictures of the equipment as well as some pictures that came out of that, uh, which was completely like incredible to be able to control two lenses from one computer but there's a there's a catch and i'll get to that okay so i'm on the astro mechanics website and we're going to find uh here there's a download uh, section for this uh for the adapters and you can see you have two things you have the canon ef desktop control utility which is a standalone non-ascom utility and you have the ascom driver.zip now this ascom driver.zip is pretty old and also it's not confirmant uh, it's not conforming to all of the ASCOM specifications for focusers. In particular, it doesn't tell you that it does not have any temperature, temperature gauge or temperature compensation. It has to say, no, I don't. It doesn't say anything and that's a problem. So with the default driver, you will not be able to connect this focuser to Nina, for example, which is a free and open source imaging software. 
So what I did is I asked uh, Astro Mechanics about that. I told them that it was a very easy code fix um, because it, it actually is a very easy code fix. It's one line of code to fix that. And um, they fixed it. They sent me an updated ASCOM driver. They did not update the driver on their website. Hmm. So something to keep in mind. If you do want to use this adapter with Nina, uh, well, feel free to add something in the comments. I might also ask Astro Mechanics whether I am allowed to post the modified driver that they sent me um, to, uh, to some public place that people can download from. Uh, but first things first, before we do that, let's uh, connect to this adapter via the um, desktop application, which I have on my screen right now. Uh, so there's multiple COM ports. I don't remember which one is the correct one, but you know, I'm just gonna connect to COM5, hope it's the right one. Say that my lens is the f1.88 lens. And it doesn't really matter that lens selection is only used to determine what apertures are available for that particular lens. And you're able to change the aperture here. So I'm actually going to double check that it's being done and maybe you can see um, the lens, through the lens right now, hopefully. And I'll set the ap aperture to like f5.6. Uh, and if it doesn't work, and it doesn't work, so it means that I'm on the wrong COM port. Okay, now we are on another COM port. I'm gonna try to change the aperture value. And there it is, I heard it change. And yes, I can barely see anything through that lens. So now it's actually at f6.3. And I am going to go back to f1.8 and immediately it changes. f2.8, it's back to f2.8. f5.0, it's back to f5.0. So this is great. Uh, of course, ideally, you probably want to use uh, like um, rings that will actually lower the aperture because they're nice and round and they don't affect your star shapes. Uh, but this is really cool to be able to control that, to have really a really simple to use kind of system. And at the same time, I can also adjust the focus. So uh, if I do this, you might be able to see that the lens focuser is actually gradually going out. And what's great with that is this particular lens, when you're using it in manual focus, it has a tendency when it's pointed to zenith to actually uh, like fall down because of gravity. But when it's in autofocus, it's actually engaged to the gears and there's no such issue. And now it's completely out, there's no problem and I don't need to do anything. The other big advantage is that if you have, you have now many Canon lenses that cannot be controlled with a man, like where the manual focus is actually electric. So you turn the uh, focuser ring, but it's actually sending information to uh, the camera and the camera replies back by electrically, uh, uh, basically um, adjusting the focus. Uh, this is not the case, but that means that those lenses that um, I think it's the STM motor, I don't remember exactly, uh, cannot be controlled directly by hand when they're not connected to power. They can be thanks to this adapter, which I find absolutely great. So that's, um, you can see, and now I can like reach back in. And this is, this is just so cool, right? You are controlling the focus of that lens. And what's really great is I, I can also do that uh, via Nina. So our SGP, our other uh, controlling software. So I could actually uh, go into Nina and I could uh, select my ASCOM Canon EF lens uh, driver, uh, COM3 EF uh, 50 millimeters F1.8, connect to it and it's moving. And that means I can autofocus from Nina. And yes, the autofocus works great. There's absolutely no issue. But let me get back to an issue with the ASCOM driver. So I already mentioned that the ASCOM driver they provide has one issue, is that it doesn't tell you whether it can do temperature compensation or not, which it should. It should say, no, I cannot, but it doesn't say anything. So that can cause problem with some software like Nina. Uh, second issue is that you cannot install two instances of that ASCOM driver, which means that if from one computer you want to connect to two as, uh, Astro Mechanics adapters to control two lenses at once, which is what I used to do with that setup uh, that had my Canon 200mm and my Canon 300mm lenses side by side, 
um, you cannot. So uh, the weirdest thing I had to do is I, I actually wrote my own ASCOM driver for this uh, controller there, um, which only controls the focus. It doesn't bother with the aperture. Uh, that way I could install my driver and their driver on the same computer and connect to both independently. So I could control two of those adapters from the same computer. Um, I did contact them about that as well. And I told them, you know, that the official solution from ASCOM is that you're basically installing two copies of the same driver with a slightly different name, which is what, you know, ZW do, does, for example, with EFW1 and EFW2, or um, ASI Camera 1 and ASI Camera 2 there. They're the same driver, but installed twice. It's horrible from a, a programmatical kind of point of view. And the reaction from the developer was like, this is very janky it it's like it doesn't look great so we're not going to do that kind of uh, kind of reaction and then i didn't hear from them anymore they were very reactive though but i did end up uh, writing my own uh, ascom driver for this uh, astro mechanics adapter and the only reason we, was because i wanted to connect two uh, of those adapters to the same computer but besides this this is an amazing piece of kit. I absolutely love this adapter and that because I can use Canon lenses, including autofocus, which is so great with my Astro cameras, just like you saw at the start of this video with that little cute rig that can, that can do autofocus. How crazy is that? And there's no separate 12 volt power that is needed by this adapter. So you don't need to feed a moonlight or any belt focuser or an Arduino controlled focuser, whatever. It's not janky, it's very compact. It fits into the imaging train. It takes very little back fo focus space. There's nothing to dislike about this adapter except the ASCOM driver that is not quite conformant to the ASCOM specifications and that does not let you connect to two or three adapters at the same time. But otherwise, I highly recommend this adapter. Whenever I see a picture of equipment where someone has a Canon lens and they have a belt focuser on that, I'm shivering inside because a belt fo focuser might actually shift a bit the Im imaging train. You might want to do some set all time for your focuser after a focus move, which you can in Nina. Um, and you know, it, it, it's, it could slip as well. Yeah, I've seen cases where it slipped when I used to have such a focuser. And slippage is something you really cannot recover from in an autofocus routine. So this basically gets rid of all of that. It works with every Canon lens that I've used with it. So three lenses, but they've tested it with more. And I never had to use a secondary uh, USB port for that. Absolutely highly recommended. I love it. So uh, if you didn't know about its existence, a lot of people don't but it is so convenient and you can get into astrophotography with this adapter, a Canon 200mm f2.8 lens, which is relatively affordable and an ASI uh, cold camera. And with this adapter taking so little back focus, 17 millimeters, it is by the way, absolutely possible without issue to have uh, a filter wheel, a ZW EFW filter wheel in here right after this camera and then go to your monochrome camera as well. So you can even do narrowband with uh, Canon cameras, which is what I was doing with uh, my dual, um, dual scope rig. It's, it's an amazing, it's so versatile as, a, as an adapter. And you know, the cherry on top is that it's super stable in terms of connection. It is not loose like the old ZWO adapter was. I have nothing bad to say about it except the ASCOM driver. So that's pretty much it on this on this adapter. I hope you learn that it exists and it can really expand your 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 possibilities for astrophotography. And you know, as usual, uh, if you like this video, if it was useful, please click like. Please also subscribe because I have so much content that I'm making. Please watch it uh, and uh, don't forget to look up at the stars whenever you can. And I'll see you next time.